It is Football and Focus, Shane's Rib Shack for a Thursday. Getting set for another big weekend. A lot of big games this week going on. Uh, several big games, in fact. Got that big Page and Grimsley game on Friday night. Got the big Page and Grimsley game tonight, too. One of our chief officials, refs from the game, the referee, Keith Brown, is with us here. And uh, break it down, Keith, what's, what do you expect for this game over at Page tonight? Good crowd, I'm sure. It's kind of like the night before the big event. It's like the day yep. before. And I know they've got the bonfire over at Page after the game. They've got a bonfire at Grimsley later on tonight, too. A lot of things going on after the games. What about uh, during the course of the game, what are you expecting tonight? Well, I think it'll be, um, you know, pages 7 and 0. And I think it's, you know, it really boils down to a big rivalry game. You know, it starts out when you when you come in and play, and, and you get that you get those JV bugs in you for that big rivalry game. Then you know, in a, in about a year, maybe next year, you're going to be playing on the big night on Friday nights on that big game. Yeah, you call like, it at all levels. So you, you can go all the way back to the middle school level, and it's like Kaiser versus Mendenhall. You see it down there too. Well, he's been Kaiser versus Mendenhall, and also I think back in the day. Um, even the 80s, it was ACOC. You know, a lot yeah, of the ACOC players right. um, went on to play with Page Tool as well. And then I think uh, Kaiser and Jackson went to Grimsley, or half mm -hmm. of Jackson mm -hmm. went to Grimsley too as well. So, you know, those are fun games in Mendenhall. You know, uh, Kaiser, Mendenhall, um, back in the day. And then a lot of the Mendenhall, all the Mendenhall goes to Page Tool as well. Have you caught any games of Mendenhall this year? No, I have not. Um, I've called some Kaiser games. I've called some ACOC and Jackson games. I did the Allen and Jackson game um, this past uh, Tuesday night. Well, who's been the best middle school team you've seen so far well, this year? Well, I'll tell you, improvement um, in middle school was uh, Guilford Middle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my daughter went there, my son went to Guilford okay. Middle. And um, so my son played football at Guilford Middle, too, as well. So I, I would actually, the most improved team this year in middle school would be uh, Guilford Middle. Yeah, I saw them on, I guess it was Tuesday. It's kind of strange because the varsity team got rained out last Friday, so Western yeah. Guilford played Monday night, and you came back the next night, and you had the middle school play, and they were going up against, I think it was Acock in that game. It was the Tigers versus the Lions, so Acock uh, taking it on Guilford Middle. Guilford yeah. Middle had the lead, I think, early in the game. It was 6 6, and right before a half, Acock intercepted the pass, took it back by 80 yards, took the halftime lead, and Guilford came back in the second half, and 16 0. They took over the second half, won the game, I think it was 22 to 12. Yeah. But that Cameron Page kid, we, we started throwing names out of middle school players now yeah. very early anyway, but Cameron <laughs> Page is that real strong quarterback for Guilford Middle, and the kid's impressive. Absolutely. You know, I had him in the game, and, uh, and he did great. I mean, he was like a running back slash quarterback. So uh, whoever is going to be his high school football coach, he's one to look out for because he's really good. I'll tell you what, that is what is going on this day and time. It is the quarterback is now your quarterback slash running back. Every yeah. team now the focus, at least a lot of the middle school kids I've seen, the focus is on the quarterback being the runner. They're picking up with the college coaches what they're doing and also what the pros are doing. Yeah, well, I mean, the most amazing thing I've seen too is I wish some of these uh, middle school teams would get some special teams involved. Yeah. You know, it seems like they don't want to punt or, or don't want to kick field goals. And I think you can win a ball game by doing that. There was a game over there at uh, Grimsley when Kaiser, I think, was playing Carnotal, and Carnotal actually had a kicker. Yeah, he actually did. kicked yeah. the extra points. He sure did. Okay, and did pretty so well with it. That's yeah. a, that's a big advantage. And even uh, even I'd say even on the JV level going into varsity, you know, if you have a good kicking team, if you got a good punt team, you you can go far. All you got to do if you got a good kicking team, you get a couple of touchdowns. If your defense can hold them, and the other team goes to two point conversion, if you mm -hmm. can if you can stop a short running play, you yeah. win the game. I remember a few years ago, I think when Dudley was in the playoffs and uh, and they really needed that field goal when they didn't have a kicker. Yeah. And I think they had to go for it. And they it, did. it didn't do well. I think AC I Reynolds. Yeah, was that AC yeah. Reynolds? At yeah. Dudley and AC Reynolds won the winning championship, too. Yeah. It was kind of a surprise. They got hot. They shouldn't have beat Dudley. Dudley won that first half. Yeah. Then AC Reynolds took over that second half. Here's the question of the week. I was going to ask a couple of page players about this, and they show up later. But I'll ask you this because mm -hmm. you would know, being the uh, official, I've been doing a lot of stat study and so far this year, tracking all these local kids' stats as much as I can, trying to update the high school kids, the college mm -hmm. kids. College kids are pretty specific about their stats and numbers. They got a couple of categories, and I guess they're both about the same, and I'll try to find out what the difference is between this. You got the one category, which is the pass breakup. You got the one category, which is the pass deflection. Is that the same thing or two different things? Do you know? Well, I reckon it depends pass breakup and pass deflection. So it could be uh, when the lineman hits the ball, that you can be deflected yeah, off of that one. That's true. And that's then, true. And then the, the um, safety yeah, or, it breaks um, up a pass, breaks play, up down the pass play downfield too as yeah, well. So the, that could be two so different. So the lineman knocks it down. That's like the pass deflection. They uh -huh. want to get their hands. I got Correct. you. I think so too. I'm going to start saying more because I see it a lot. So many, there's so many different stats mm -hmm. and the, the big TFL, the tackle for the loss. So they've yeah. got those. They've got the quarterback hurries, which mm -hmm. I think is the QBH, but yeah. uh, kind of our novice who just used to study, I guess, uh, carries and yards and. Mm -hmm. uh, 
passes and yards, a lot of these new categories are starting to kind of expand upon us. Got to keep up with all this uh, modern day technology they have with these college scenes. Yeah. They got a lot of local guys playing college football too because this kid, we just pulled up yesterday, this kid, Chris Jaspers from Page, mm -hmm. starting center for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Nice. He's got about uh, 3,000 college snaps under his belt and he's six foot five and weighs 294. Mm -hmm. And they're playing against Florida International on Saturday. It's going to be on the American Sports Network. I think I said that right, Don. ASN, American Sports Network, that new broadcasting crew that came in. They're covering that game against at 6 o'clock Saturday. We should pick it up, get to pick it up here. So he's a snapper? He's he's the center, yeah. He's, a, he's the man, yeah. Six foot five, two ninety four. Well, I thought, you know, for me back in the day, um, I had Stuart Albright passing me the ball for the uh, punting back in the day. Mm. And knowing his brother... And his long snapping career, I, w I would like to say I've been the first person that started his career as a long snapper. You kinda, and Ethan went on to the red, uh, played in the proposed. Like so you kind of jump started his career then. Ethan no, I Albright. didn't because he, um, I had his brother. Yeah. Because Ethan did. never came in because Ethan came in after gotcha. after his brother left. So I did. So Stewart was uh, snapping. Yeah, Stewart was snapping to me. Gotcha. So you know, one of my claim to fame was you know, uh, uh, Grimsley Page game. I was uh, at back there on a punt, and you got All American Troop Welburn over there. Uh, do I punt the ball? Or do I let it punt it out of bounds? So I punted myself, oh, what the heck, I'm going to punt it to him. Well, guess what? He ran it back for a touchdown. So, hmm. But you know what? He did it when he was you at the University of Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. I want the only one. So. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it was amazing. I still got it on film. It's on YouTube. So That's pretty good. It's on YouTube also. Yeah, it's, it's on wow. YouTube. Just, I think, do a trip while we're in the Every see. football season, you probably got to go back, or maybe more than once uh, during the season, got to go back and look that one up occasionally, too. Check that out I on do. YouTube. Yeah, I you do. have to. I do like to look Those at memories it. are important. Show my son. I wish he could tell some of the v VHS tapes and the DVDs, you know, back in there. They Everybody used to have the giveaway uh, VHS tapes exactly. and uh, change it over to that, too, as well. well Stuart so. Albright did pretty good for himself, and yes, uh, did. Ethan did very good for himself. Well, I know. Too. I reckon we can call him Judge Albright now. Exactly. Better do that correctly. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. If I see him, I better say Judge Albright. So. Yeah, he's done pretty well, and yeah. uh, Ethan has continued to do well. Yeah, but isn't Ethan that page? Uh, he's coaching softball. Oh, so yeah, softball and plus page. I think he's working for the Coaches Association down the street of Crimson. Okay. I yeah, think he's yeah, also yeah. in there with Phil Weaver and those guys, too, doing yeah. some work down there. So. Yeah. And Ethan's doing those uh, North Carolina Tar Heel football games on Saturday. Days, okay. color commentary I for said that. I did. I did hear him this past week, and yeah, I, was, yeah. I was hearing in the car. He actually sounded really good. He's doing. I think he's improved a ton from last year to this yeah. year. He's come a long way. Okay, absolutely. Because yeah. I saw him, um, you know, the Notre Dame game. I was in the car, and I was listening. I said, "That sounds like Ethan." That I'm sure him. if it wasn't Ethan on that. And so. they had plenty to talk about during that game. Oh my goodness, did they ever? Mm. Even uh, roughing the snapper. Yeah, and amazing so, uh, all that work with uh, Carolina doing all that work, getting ready for the Notre Dame game, and go to Notre Dame and still give up. They've given up 50 to Notre Dame, give up 50 to Clemson, and 70, 70 to East Carolina. To Carolina. Amazing. What's well, been a wild year for their defense down there? So their average uh, score uh, game is, what, 40, and they're still losing. Yeah, I know. You're right. <laughs> right. They're scoring 40 to 40 points a so game. 40 still, again, they're still dropping losing. Dropping those games. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Crazy. About your season, though, getting ready for tomorrow night's game, what do you think is going to be the point of focus, all the activities? What are, what are some of the activities surrounding the big Page and Grimsley game coming up on Friday night? Well, there's, there's more than just the game. Absolutely. Well, I actually participate. I participate every year. Uh, all the Grimsley alumni and all the Page alumni uh, – um, and um, parents and friends and everybody else that's involved with the sponsors. We all get together at Brown Park and we all have a golf tournament on the day of the Grimsley Page football game. And it's a lot of fun. It's actually sold out this year. So we actually have two, both golf courses, the players and the champions is all booked out and it's actually double holes. So you got eight people in every hole. Wow. So you got an A team and a B team. So, um, and you just play your own score. There's no captain's choice. It's all your own score. And uh, we have a blast. So we get done about four. What time do you start again? We start at 10 o'clock. Yeah. We get done about four, 4.30. Uh, we hang around. A lot of people go back, uh, get ready, and then get ready for the football game. And I bet there's a big uh, cookout or something after the uh, tournament. Have any food for you They guys? do. They have food for us afterwards. I think yeah. there's one of the pizza um, one of the pizza places that gives us food afterwards. And there is prizes, too. And, How long um, has it been going on now? I think... I, I know it's on the website, but let me get me wrong. I'd say about between about nine years. Nine years, not I'd bad. say it's been about nine years. I've been to every one. It's it's just so much fun. I know every Grimsley Page Friday, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark off and I'm gonna go to that. And you know, it helps both schools. And a lot of money being raised. A lot of money being raised. Yes, yeah. it's probably their biggest fundraiser that they do any year, and um and it comes in every year. And I think Grimsley Page both split it. I think during the what are the between the second quarter or the half, they they show the big check that they've raised for each one too. What about well. the website? You mentioned there's a website. And ball too. Yeah, just see if you could go into Google, just type in Grimsley Page Golf. It'll okay. come up. Even if you say Grimsley Page, you'll see it's a golf tournament. Got their own spot right there. They got their own spot, yeah. and then you pay on there. And it's a lot. Of, and you have pictures on there. So who would get all the credit going back to say nine or ten years 
who would get the credit for coming up with this idea and getting all this started? Any idea? Yeah, it was a good question. I, I think when they come up with it, you know, I said, that sounds like I got a good friend of mine, Robert Myers, and we always play golf. And I said, let's do this. And then it, it started out small. It really did. It wasn't as big. It just it just blossomed in like the past four or five years. I mean, it's just of when it first started off, it was like small. Granted, we do have to pay an entry fee that's actually going you know up to. But right. you know what? It all goes to both schools. So we uh, us, we're fine with it. And they got some big sponsors too. So like people can sponsor whole hole. Mm, good so, stuff. You, know, so you, can you can raise money a lot of different ways. Oh, yeah. the entry fees, all the ways fees too. And sponsor holes too. And actually, a lot of the this is politician time. Yeah. A lot of the politicians, but oh, they man. might be at one of the holes. Just saying, you know, vote for me. So yeah. some of those guys do that. Too. What are our questions? Like one of the kids when they get in, uh, we ask the kids questions every week. One of the questions this week is. Uh, if Tom Tillis and Kay Hagen showed up at your door at the same time, not to the door, who would you let in first? Who would I let in first? Mm-hmm. Tom Tillis. <laughs> Tom would come right on in then. Yeah. And uh, I, I would talk to both of them, but, you know, I'd probably be for Tom Tillis. It's pretty interesting. I'd tell you, the, the Channel 2 News at about 11 o'clock at night, lately, I don't think I've ever seen as many of these uh, political ads that I've seen over the past All over. month. It's crazy. Oh my goodness! I saw one maybe today on cable TV. I hadn't seen one with like a Tom Tillis as a Jack in the Box. That was kind of crazy. I mean, I'm just, who comes up with these ads? I know that creative company I mean, who's making the creative, a bundle too. How about the ones that want to? Um, uh, did you hear what happened in Florida where the debater didn't come with the fan? He came with the fan underneath the stadium podium. Did you hear about that? Didn't hear about that. Was it Charlie Crist and? Uh, he put a fan and he didn't want to mark. Uh, the other guy didn't want to come in, and so I, if I was Charlie Quist, I'd be buying a whole bunch of fans. And say, yeah, here's a fan for you. Mm. I'd, I'd be having some marketing team come up there and get those little small fans, and that'd be my big PR. Because he was, said it was an electronic device underneath the podium. Right. So man, I reckon he must sweat, and mm. uh, he didn't want to be sweaty. Mm. And so the other opponent said, you know, I'm not going to debate if he has an electronic. Then he didn't come out. Wow. So it, I think it just happened last night. It was pretty Interesting. funny. Interesting. Getting tight down to about, what, two weeks left? About yeah. two weeks to go? I'll be glad all those commercials are done. i say those commercials. Those don't, depends really? on how much money has been spent on that oh uh, K. Hagen tom Tillis race. Wow. 60, well, we could take that, and that would help the uh, national debt a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah. Kick it down some, at least. Anything. I mean, there's a lot of outside money, too. So Yeah, you know, a lot of it out of too. state, a lot of these uh, outside sources. Speaking about that again, talk about the game tomorrow night. We've okay. got like a Page team 0-7 and, and a Grimsley team, I think, 2-5. Two and, two and five. Five. Yep. What seven, makes this still a big game tomorrow night? Keep you know, it's, it, it still goes back to tradition. I mean, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s, back in the 70s, back back when everything started getting going. I mean, I remember when there's 10,000 people in the stands. I mean, it was crowded. It was fun. But the great thing about it is, is that after the game was over with, we actually all got together on Battleground and Burger King and all hanged out. Mm, those were so good days. I yeah. had great friends. Paige and Grimsley, we're friends. I'm friends. We're all friends. I got friends to this day. And actually, my wife is a Paige graduate. So, you know. So um, you got a split household, but absolutely. still you're together. Yeah. We got a split household. But, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's a rivalry, but everybody is still friends after the rivalry is over. Now, how old are your kids now? Um, my, my one son's in uh, college, and my other daughter, she's a freshman at Western Guilford. So she's at Western Guilford right now. Yeah. Does she play any sports? No. No, no, she dances. Involved. She's yeah. a dancer. So. Well, she'll do well. And my son, you know, I won my first East Carolina game, which was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, it's uh, a different atmosphere there in Greenville for a football game. And actually, East Carolina is really good this year. Well, they really so, are. So, uh, you know, it was a couple. I went to the SMU game, so it was uh, one of those fun games. And you look at the uh, Paige Grimsley games, any of those games you kind of look back at as kind of milestones in your memory of well, the challenges over the years? You know, the milestone for me was the year after I left is the year we actually beat Paige. So that was the other Kurt McGuinn. I think it was in the playoff game mm -hmm. that um, Kurt McGuinn kicked that field goal um, to beat Paige, which I was actually down in Wilmington with some friends. We found out about it and had a great time the rest of the time. And then, um, you know, the past couple years have been pretty rough for Grimsley. Um, that last year was, was one of the hardest ones to be at. I mean, I don't think they could have done anything right in that game. Do you see Grimsley being a competitive 11 tomorrow night out there? You know, it, it's one of those things where – this game takes everything up a notch. You know, it, it's a you could be you could have both teams could be 0 and 0 and 12. You know, everybody 0 Ophers are they're all 8 and 0 and, and 7 and 1. It, it's still the game. I mean, you still remember this. Yeah, it's you, like they that. will still remember this 20 years they later. They talk about it that it's like the one game season. Don't talk about that. You're for the play.
playoffs sometimes, mm-hmm. take it one game at a time. This is definitely tomorrow night's one of those one game seasons. Absolutely. For Absolutely. Page, especially, not having yeah. any wins off for Grimsley, trying to, you know, if they could win tomorrow night, they mm-hmm. could go three and five. They'd be two and oh in the conference. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great start for them. I know. And so it's one of those things where this is a very important game for Grimsley. And it's a pride game for Page, too. But, you know, it's one of those things where. It's, it's, it's just one of those games you remember for 20 years down the line. You know, if you remember, I mean, I remember, you know, our games weren't close either, especially when you had Page with the dynasty back in the 80s too as well. You, you were back in the Trip Welburn days then. I was back in the yeah, Trip Welburn days. Wow. So, you know. Um, but, you know, the great thing is, is even when they were in the playoffs, and we and back then today it was really hard to get in the playoffs back one in the 80s. One team went most yeah, of the time. One team yeah, one team You know, it's not like now. Yeah. So, you know, I, I supported them when they were in the playoffs. I went down there in Solemn. I think I went down to Gastonia, Hunter Huss one game to see Page. Yeah, play. Yeah. So, you know, it was it's always that good rivalry there too as well. So but I enjoy it. Um, you know, my wife is a page graduate, so we can have some good ribbon afterwards too as well. So back when you were playing, you were playing for Coach Smouse? I was playing for Coach Smouse, I sure was. He did yeah. a good job there. I thought yeah. he was a reputable coach. They Absolutely. did a good job. He said a lot. And actually his two sons who were who were little pit squeaks back in the day are now actually uh, football coaches. Yeah, I think one of them's Furman. One of them's Brian and the other mm-hmm. one I can't remember his first name. But like I said, I did see the one on the Furman mm-hmm. roster, looking yes. over their roster for the coaching staff yep. while back was because I see the smiles on mm-hmm. there. And the on. other one I think maybe coached down at Raleigh somewhere. Yeah, he I think his dad were coaching together one time. Yeah, they sure were. Still see his dad briefly every summer. He'll pop in, I guess, at the uh, All-Star All-Star, games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see him sometimes some of the state championship games. He'll be around too as well. So, you know, we get to go to those state championship games. And now, how did you get the striped shirt? How did that come about? Um, it was just one of those things about 14 years ago. I just, I just wanted to go out and, and say, hey, uh, I'd like to do this. And, um, I went. I was in High Point, and I went to the High Point uh, clinic, and they said sure. And luckily, back then, you could go right into JV football. You went right into that. Program, so yeah, yeah, but I still, I still did my, I still did Pee Wee. So I still did the little kids too, as well, Lewis Center, and everything too, as well. Or what we call that? What's that? JC Park. Yeah, the JC, JC Park. Park. Yeah. So I did the JC Park, and now that um, you know, I did the little kids too. So I worked my way up, and now um, I'm really, I, did, I still do middle school games. I still do varsity. I, I don't want to do college. I mean, I'm, you know, I got a wife and kids, so mm-hmm. you know. Um, Who got you interested in becoming an official, a referee? Who got you? It was just in? me being, being in love of football. Yeah, just trying to stay, you know, find a way to stay in the game. Absolutely, yeah. just find a way to stay in the game. You know, if it wasn't for this, I'd maybe you know uh, be on the chain crew at at, at yeah. local game or do whatever. See, I think I'd rather be an official than be on the chain crew. That chain crew can, can get kind of crazy over there sometimes. They can. That. You better let that thing down. With these oh, kids gonna fly on over there because of that. <laughs> but they have live. made the uh, the apparatuses, the sticks. They made them yes, a little soft. They right have. They sure back have. in the year, it was like pure oh, it was metal. Pure metal. Wow. I know. <laughs> you can land on one of those. You get your bell rung. Possibly. You just see some helmets that are oh, indented man. into some of the sides of the things too, as well. So about it. there's some indentions in there too. Did so. you ever call any games like some of those uh, old officiating legends we've seen over the years? Guys like the Wayne Butlers and the Don Tillys and all those. Guys? We got the Wayne Butlers. We got the Don Tillys. We got um, Joe Jones. Is still coming. Oh man, that guy's okay. everywhere. That guy. We need to get him in here one week because that guy's. I mean, he's over 50 gosh, years. It's amazing. Amazing. That he's guy, amazing I see that guy out there in a lot of football games, yep. and sometimes he's like the head guy. Yeah, he does. He's um, the show. He does white. He does white. We call it white hat for a referee. He does on Thursday nights. He does some on Friday nights too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Joe Jones, and then Jim Wall. I've heard the his referee, name. Jim How about uh, Mr. Holmes? You ever see him around? Uh, Jim Holmes, yes. Yeah. Um, I worked with Jim Holmes a couple weeks ago on a Friday night. So we, um, it's really good it's to work with him too. Kind of a treat. One of those older referees that have been around yes, for years. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think absolutely. they're they're probably doing my game back in the day. Probably so. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I saw one in my yearbook. I said there he was on the yearbook. I can see. But I think back then on Friday nights they could wear shorts. Yeah. yeah now we got to wear pants. Yeah. They so. really went crazy those pants. Did they? Where'd that come from? Um, I think it was just uh, what the NFL was doing. Oh yeah. Um, NFL starts the trends a lot when it comes. Kind of referees. Kind of had to trickle down. Yeah, it, it, I have to admit, you know, the knickers were great. Uh, my physique is not a knickers physique, mm-hmm. um, so the pants actually fit a lot better. But they're a lot more comfortable. They're a lot, you can run a lot faster. Than you. Yeah, something I'll bring up because I see this stuff during the week. I want to bring it in here on Thursday nights to talk about. It. It's so interested in the football games. Looking at the punters these days, I'm like the punters. They're not. They don't even have any pads, and they got they got pants that come up above their knees. They do. Hey, take, if they got hit in the knees. They have no protection at all. There's no protection. Look in the NFL. Nobody's wearing protection. Nobody has on any thigh pads, knee pads, or any pads. So that's more than just the punters. A lot of the guys. 
No, it's a lot. The wide receivers. Yeah, I heard about the receivers um, doing a lot of that. You know, yeah. I, and those but, little shoulder pads they've got are so it, small. It, in high school, we, they have to be over your knees. Gotcha. So, you have to cover you know, knees. But uh, the trend is that whoever manufacturer them or doing them so small, they're they're completely above the knees. Check out college. I mean, those receivers don't wear anything over their knees. But all the concussions going on, I all know. the uh, concerns about that, you would think they want to protect other parts of the body. Well, well here, here's a problem I see too. If you look in a professional level, look, look at those guys when they take their helmets off. Okay, when I when I did it, you had to go out and you had to go up mm -hmm. to take that helmet off your head. These guys are floating it off like yeah, it's candy. Yeah, it's not even tight. It's not even tight. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I don't think they're fitting those helmets as as I think that should be correct. But, you know, that's one of those things. Because they throw them things off like it's Yeah, you them. almost need an equipment specialist. you got a trainer. You need an equipment specialist who's going to yeah. check on those, make sure those are right, too. Because it was hard getting that helmet oh, off your was, head. Yeah, back. But, but now to. they just throw it off there like it's nothing. So, uh -huh. I don't know. It's one of those issues I see. And they talk about a lot of concussions in the NFL and everything. But these guys, those helmets are coming off like it's eat, like like nothing. Now, you'll be at the big game tomorrow night. What time do you start getting ready for the big Page game, Page Grimsley game? Do you get over there a certain time in the afternoon, get a little early and set up in the parking lot, those kind um, of things? We, well, the tough thing is, is doing the Grimsley Page golf tournament. You're pretty tired. Wow, you're pretty burned out from that. Yeah. <laughs> you're pretty burned out from that. So, you know, we all have fun afterwards. So it's really going home and, you know, getting getting cleaned up a little bit and then going to the game. So our tailgating, like, like it probably would be if we didn't have the golf tournament. Mm -hmm. so I'm kind of doing a little rush job because, you know, I've got to go all the way back to High Point and then come all the way back to Greensboro. Gotcha. So I'm going all the way out to Brown Park and then going all the way out. Well, you got a slingshot of a day tomorrow, then. Yeah, so it's fun. It's it's for, you know, great calls. We're raising money for Grimsley and Page um, on their athletic programs, and uh, we have a good day playing golf. And, you know, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be fun at the golf uh, game, too. So Keith is with us, Keith Brown. He's an official locally, a graduate yep. of Grimsley, and you graduated from college at North Carolina? Uh, UNC Greensboro. UNC Greensboro. Went to Wilmington for a couple of years and came back to UNC Greensboro. Yeah, so. Did you go into law school or anything like after that? No, uh, no. Uh, but okay. your dad was in law, right? Yeah, back my dad in was in law school, yeah. yeah. Also, the, the I worked for Arch Parents. I worked for a local beer company. Okay, I came so you did, took a different trek than your dad. Yeah. Your dad was like the original Charlie Brown, and there was another Charlie Brown right after, after your dad, too, mm -hmm. right? Your brother. Yep, yeah, he yeah. does all the cross country music. Mm -hmm. and stuff, so. He's been out for years. What's yes. a typical week like for you doing all this football stuff? Well, it gets busy like now. You know, we got a lot of middle schools going on Tuesdays. So, so Tuesday, got, you got the middle school. Tuesday, you got Thursday, you got uh, JV, mm -hmm. and Friday, you got varsity. So you're rolling pretty much yeah, those three days. Those three days. And then some some of our referees are retired, so they'll actually – some do volleyball, some do uh, the little kids' games too as well. So they're like doing four days a week. I mean, you're seeing some of those guys on Friday nights, a lot of the older officials that were on the field for years, they're now mm -hmm. up in the press box doing the clock and some stuff like that, right? Yeah, I do see a lot of clock too as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What about Saturdays? I mean, you don't do any officials. No, there's a, lot, there's a lot of our officials do Saturdays too. Really? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. doing recreation games? No, and, they're doing the college ball. College um, ball. And we do have some officials do flag. Yeah, because remember flags. Don Tilly and Wayne Butler used mm -hmm. to look up their car and they would yep. like pop around all these different little neighborhoods yep. and these communities. Community football did a lot of that on Saturday. Yeah, they sure did. So a lot oh, of man. us do that too as well. So And then they're all over. In Rockingham County has got some going on too and us down here. And then I think there's some new uh, Pop Warner going on too. There is well. a lot of Pop Warner. And that Rockingham County program right here has done really well yeah. up there. Yeah. I know Coach Woodruff over at Northwest, when he was there, he had gotten the team. Mm -hmm. His kids, I think, were in that program. He got that team kind of put together and they moved on up to Rockingham yeah. County and got yeah. up there. I know you got to get rolling. All right, Andy. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Have a good night. Keep with us I'll and, keep you uh, up to date tomorrow night on the big game. You got it. Two. You got I'll do it. it on GreensboroSports.com. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Don. See y'all. Yes, sir. Keep proud awesome. with us. Appreciate his effort stopping yeah. in tonight on the way to the ball game. And we'll have some uh, Page kids in a couple minutes. Take a little break here. Shane's Rib Shack and our Page young men will be on the way here soon. Taking a break. Coming back on Football and Focus with Shane's. Back in just a few.